and good morning, church. I'm Reverend Susan Payne, and I'm the minister at First Christian Church in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Welcome to worship. Please take a moment, either now or after worship, to fill out our contact card. There is space to include a prayer concern or, and also to let the church know that you were in worship. Here are our announcements for this week. Our prayer group is tomorrow, Monday, March 15th, by Zoom. And our Monday Bible study is taking a break until Holy Week, when we will read a biblical account of Christ's last week on earth. Before we begin, just a note about our music director, Marjorie Maple. Marjorie is very ill and has been in the hospital since Friday morning. Last week, we recorded music for this service, and that's what you'll hear this morning. Please remember Marjorie in your prayers. I'm sure that she would want us to enjoy her music this morning, so I have included it. Let's begin with our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. God loves us with a steadfast love. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God loves us so much, he gave his son for us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God loves us with a great love, rich in mercy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. When we pray, it is okay to let God help us. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus very specifically teaches the disciples to pray for basic needs as well as what I would call kingdom needs. God answers prayer in ways that are sometimes exactly what we ask for, and other times our prayer is answered differently. God may say not yet, or even give us something that we don't expect. I hope that we can all be open to hearing God with faithful hearts this morning. As I offer each prayer, I will say, God, in your mercy, and you are invited to, to respond, hear our prayer. This morning, I pray a tender prayer for Marjorie and her family. May they know that they are surrounded by your perfect love and healing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please bow with me as we continue our prayers. Faithful God, your promises are new every morning. We have no greater love than yours. And we come here today to worship you and to serve you. Open our eyes to the wonder that surrounds us and help us to recognize the prayers that you answer, even if those answers weren't what we asked for. Be with Marjorie and her family. Give them no doubt that you are with them with your comforting and healing power. Be with Laura Hines and her family as they plan Bill's service this week. Reveal to us all the ways that we may serve those around us whose needs are so great, but whose resources are so small. Help us to be faithful, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Today's scripture reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. May God add blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these words of scripture. This little story from the book of Numbers about a bronze serpent on a pole is one of the strangest in the Bible. It's right up there with another story from Numbers, Balaam and his talking, prophesying donkey. That one is really fascinating. It's in Numbers 22, if you want to read it after the service. But today we'll be content to ponder the meaning of snakes on poles. Let's start with a little background. Moses and the Israelites have escaped enslavement in Egypt with God's help, and they are wandering the wilderness, endless wandering, 40 years of wandering. And the people have what some might call CCS, constant complainer syndrome. They don't like the taste of the water, so God shows Moses how to sweeten it. They are hungry, so God sends bread from heaven. Later, they have no water, so Moses strikes a rock with his staff, and water flows. They demand meat, and God sends quail. Over and over, they complain, and time and time again, God answers. In the scripture we heard today, the people are, no surprise, murmuring again. <laughs> This time, it's against God and Moses. And finally, God has had enough. God sends fiery snakes. People are bitten and die. And then they finally realize that they have sinned with their constant complaining. And they repent. Once more, God forgives. He commands Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole so that everyone who is bitten shall look on it and live. Apparently, the statue worked because the Israelites packed it up and took it with them. God answered their pleas, perhaps not in the way that they expected, but answered them none nonetheless. On Ash Wednesday, we acknowledged our mortality. We admitted that we had sinned in many ways. One of those ways that we have sinned is a lack of faith. Let's talk for just a minute about what faith is and, and what faith is not. Faith is not the same thing as belief. When we believe in something, it's cerebral. It's a head thing. Beliefs are concepts, ideas, things that we give our intellectual assent to. But faith is deeper than that. The faith that we see depicted time and time again in the Bible is a whole body enterprise. Faith is an in your bones trust in God. During the pandemic, Christian themed merchandise has found a new catchphrase, faith over fear. With an eye catching graphic that sometimes looks like a mathematical fraction, we see it everywhere, faith over fear. It's a wonderful idea that is, except when it's used as a tool to measure who has faith 
and who does not. Some have hurtfully and boastfully claimed that their faith is stronger than yours or mine. They trust God to keep them from getting the virus and therefore they do not and will not sacrifice any of their personal freedoms. These individuals and even churches themselves have sadly looked askance at those who choose to take an immunization, to wear a mask, or not to gather in groups. The not so subtle implication is that their faith is stronger, that others lack faith. Where they are missing the mark is that they are characterizing the taking of precautions as a mark of fear. I see it as just the opposite. Embracing these precautions can be one of the most difficult and faith-filled actions that you and I can take. What appears to others to be fear may instead be a strong and confident embrace of our faith in God. Back to the wilderness. It is clear that God did not come through for the Israelites in the way that they wanted. These people wanted those snakes gone. But God didn't work that way. The snakes stayed and the people were bitten. God gave them that odd bronze snake on a pole so that those who trusted could look at the snake and be healed. That serpent was meant to be a reminder of God's power and care. It was not what they asked for, but it was what they needed. Sometimes God sends us a snake on a pole to save us, and we have to be willing to accept it. That's why faith is so important. We have to trust that God will heal us, will make us whole in a way that we may not expect. If we don't keep our focus on trust in God, we may miss those miracles, our miracles entirely. We can't predict God, can't tame God, can't control God. We can't put God in a box. Here's a cartoon that I want to share with you. Jesus and the Buddha are sitting together on a cloud. The Buddha tells Jesus, I should have made one of those nobody can depict me rules. They always make me fat. And Jesus replies, well, tell me about it. I've been a blonde white dude for like 2000 years. We worship a God who may not look or act in ways that meet our expectations, and that can cause us a bit of anxiety. We can't wrap our brains around a God who defies description, a God who is the great I am, God who will not be put in a box, no matter how big of a box it is. When we need help, the temptation to give God a list of suggested answers for our lives is almost impossible to resist. We give God our answers when we need help, just in case God missed something, just in case. But our God is much too big for the small boxes that we offer to contain God and God's will. It would be easy to miss this odd little story about snakes and healing if it weren't for Jesus' words in the Gospel of John. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus was lifted up on a cross for all to see, not exalting himself, but always like that serpent on a pole, pointing to God, reminding us to trust in Jesus and to trust in God. God took the thing that we are perhaps the most afraid of, death, and raised Jesus as the antidote, the sort of source of everlasting life on the cross. God didn't leave Jesus there on the cross, though. God raised him again three days later into eternal oneness with the Holy. Can we find faith in God that allows us to give up our false sense of control? It's hard. Can we find the faith in God that allows us to accept answers to prayer that may look a whole lot different than the answers that we suggested? We are living in one of those rare times when feeling out of control is the norm. 
It's the norm for much of the world. And how we choose to respond to our current circumstances is key. The wilderness and the wildernesses of our lives tempt us to try to tame God, to control God, and to make God fit our expectations. And yet, the wilderness times, our wandering in the wilderness, precisely are the best places to trust God to work in our lives. Amen. God's blessings are poured out on us. We can strive to have faith, trust in our bones so that we can experience all that God has entrusted to us. Please consider sending an offering to First Christian Church of Bartlesville so that we can continue to work for God's purposes together. To give a, to the ministries of First Christian Church, please send a contribution to P.O. Box 1177, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. The zip code is 74005. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he reassures them that God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with him. When we come to the table, here we lift the bread. We recognize in this symbol the healing power of Jesus Christ, and then let us reflect on the emblem of this bread. We remember Jesus first lifted up on a cross and then lifted by God's love to receive new life three days later. In our own anxiety-filled wildernesses, all are welcome to eat this bread, to drink from the cup, following Jesus until we, like him, also are raised up. Shall we pray? O oh God of guidance and care, help us resist the temptation to sit beside the joy and wonder of Lent and to resume the dull, safe routines of lives that aren't touched by your spirit. As we eat this bread and receive this cup, help us to realize that we are receiving your invitation to believe and respond faithfully. Help us find the nourishment to serve you with faithfulness. We pray in the name of the one who was faithful to us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the night that Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. He shared it with his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, Christ poured a cup. He said, this cup is the covenant renewed in my blood. Each time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, Remember me until I come again.
it's difficult to trust in God, to trust Jesus at times when we're not sure that our prayers are going to be answered. We're not sure that they're going to be answered in the ways that we want. And these are the times that it is toughest to have faith. These are the times that call us to be strong and to be firm in our trust in God. So go out filled with faith, energized with the Holy Spirit, and seeking God's purposes every day. Amen. Thank you.